Welcome, welcome to, to Cinequest, Cinequest Video. Uh, hello and welcome to Cinequest Video, the podcast that delves deep into the VHS classics to the modern day format and beyond. Today we have a little bit of a different episode coming at you today. We are focusing on a Criterion movie. Now, frankly, I don't know too much about Criterion. And we have, a, I guess, would be a different host today. I'm going to shut up after like a, about a couple 30 seconds or so. The female host. Female host today. Ooh, shocking. Ooh. Yeah, Do you feel threatened? Quality. <laughs> but I'm going to step back, of course. Uh, I am Ray, normal host of CineQuest. But I'm going to allow Idanya, who's our new host for today, to continue on and introduce her guest on her episode of Criterion today. So, Idanya, take it away. Of course, darling. I, I own Park Avenue now. Um, so, of course, I would like to reintroduce myself in a more formal manner. I'm Idanya, and I was previously in a CineQuest podcast show for Chasing Amy, that Valentine's Day special, which, I mean, wasn't quite the romance I was expecting, but... You know, I guess some are into suffering, some are not. So. <laughs> and my co-host would be DA. Yes, hi guys. And my favorite, I would say, would you be like a recurring ho- like guest or would just be... Yeah, I'd say guest star. Are you, just, are you just, you're just fucking Ron, dude. You, oh yeah, my name's Ron, by the way. <laughs> no, it's fucking Ron. Fucking if I may Ron. clear up just real quick, yeah. uh, Ron uh, has surpassed his special guest status. Oh, yes. That's, that's what he is just, I'm talking about. Uh, he's, he's Reggie. He's, he's uh, Bryce I'm, Reggie now. Nice. <laughs> Dope. He, sur- Dope. he survived the beating that we gave him with an uh, old VHS. Oh, tapes. yeah. The, the socks. Oh, that hazing. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, Ron, mm-hmm. so happy to have you in my show now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because this is my show now. <laughs> I own this house. Just too. to clarify. Sorry, fun. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the film that I have decided I wanted to talk about for our first formal episode is The Night Porter. In the Criterion Collection, it is of spine number 59. So it's one of Criterion's earlier releases, I would say, pretty up there with like... Salo and but also the earlier Fellini, like in half. And I think uh, Seven Blues. Samurai is like Samurai. pretty. I don't even know. It has to be like a really low number. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah. So probably it's does. pretty early, which is why I kind of questioned, like, hey, why would this be considered into the Criterion such an early stage? Mm-hmm. Um, it was released in 1974, uh, directed by, directed and written by Liliana Gavani. Uh, she's known for other films such as Year of the Cannibals, The Guest, and The Beyond Good and Evil. <clears throat> yeah, beyond but good none of evil. these have a lot of. Um, they don't have a lot of acclaim. They don't. Oh, really? So this yeah. is this is the only one that that she has received. Yeah, she actually received the Robert Bresson Award for this movie. For, yeah, for The Night Porter in 1974. No, she received the Robert Bresson Award. Last year, in 2018. Oh, really? Yeah, for this film only. Like, I think she's mostly gotten a lot of acclaim for this film. She did get a lot of acclaim and has received a lot of acclaim, but she um, received a lot of momentum because of the controversy of this film. And the reason that she's become such an icon, I think, Mm -hmm. is because of the controversy of this film, much more than um, her other ones. Although... Uh, she's kind of extenuated on the themes of this film and her other work, and we'll talk about that. Sure. But yeah, I think that it definitely has a lot to do with the controversy, um, how people perceive it now, how people perceived it then. Uh, I yeah. think that played a lot into how we think of the film now and how it used to be thought of. Uh, it's very different, and I think uh, interpretations can be very, very different now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Which no. yeah. But, I mean, it did get a lot of, you know, bad reviews. It, 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 got, it was badly received when it first premiered. Right, right. Because Ebert. it was something very fresh and new. Because, I mean, it did kind of coerce itself into the Nazis. It right. began the Nazi exploitation movie, which is very popular, I think. Yeah. And, like, would it be 
Was that like a genre movement? That because I I meant to ask you about that. The genre. I think it is. Nazi yeah, I, I, I don't know specifically. I haven't seen any of those Nazi exploitation I, 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 movies I either. either. I have heard of. But them. I've I know it's a thing. And I'm aware yeah. she also tapped into this. This was something that she was conscious of as she made the film and went more into it. But yeah, 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 no, for sure. So. Yeah, it was directed by her, and those are the yes. films that she made. That you cut this out. I'm just reminding myself. <laughs> yeah, Cavani was great. Uh, I'm interested in. Uh, I had told you I I am very interested in seeing some of her other work. This uh, is the first like, movie I've seen from it, her. It too. was well, Night, it's Night the only Porter. One that's mostly popular. For yeah, me. I would yes. watch another one. I would say I would want to see something like Maybe. else she's did. So yeah. there, uh, the one there's two that's that have interested me most. But uh, if you really like the Night Porter, I think that uh, what's really attuned to it is one called the Berlin Affair. It's seemingly the same kind of story uh -huh. very similar thematic elements but it's told from the female perspective during world war ii it's a world war ii film mm -hmm. very yeah. very well, similar post world war post world II war ii film, because film. it takes place right. in 1957 yeah 57 in, this is so the, but but the film in, in, in the and film. of itself takes place in, in world war ii yeah he's talking during about the plot oh yeah. okay, okay sorry. the story um, plot takes place in 1957 in vienna mm -hmm. so he's right talking, and but, but uh what i'm getting at is more is like it was very uh i guess sex exploitation nazi exploitation not exploitation, whatever it is uh and uh so she tapped into that but in a way that felt very uh I guess it'd be more feminist is the term we'd use now. Well, I don't know if it would be feminist because, I mean... I haven't seen it, so I can't say, but to hear that it was told from a female perspective in contrast to a film like this, which I would argue is very, very much attuned towards the male gaze, uh, I don't know. Uh, it may feel different. It might not. I can't really judge, but it, it is okay. nice to know that she was aware Um of how this sort of movement occurred and that she made this film as a sort of um and like a, like a, a sort of way to combat all of that and but i have been telling this you this one was before it's the berlin affair now i got it like i yeah. got confused oh, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah i, I thought I we were talking about the night border no the, no, berlin, affair. the berlin affair so was that one before or after the, the night porter uh, so it was the after Berlin affair after the night porter and it is um yeah from what i've heard it's very much uh the same kind of exploitative feel but through the female perspective and because okay, of so that the female is the right. masochist i i would assume i'm not entirely sure it is very acclaimed, and I'm sh surprised it isn't really talked about much, but I did see mm -hmm. it mentioned a lot within the controversy of The Night Porter. So I like that, and the other thing I was going to add, you know, I love my philosophy. I love Nietzsche more than anything in the world. Um, so she made a film called Beyond Good and Evil, which mm -hmm. is my favorite book by, Beyond, uh, by, by Nietzsche. And um, uh, apparently it is about a... Uh, Three, a, a triangular relationship that occurred between Nietzsche, a homosexual relationship with a man, and a woman. What? So it was kind of a love triangle between the three of them. Mm -hmm. I knew Nietzsche was crazy. I love him. Uh, but I had no idea. Was, I knew he was that crazy too because literally right before he would, he died. Like he was dancing around in, in his underwear, uh -huh. and his sister would like make people pay to go look at him like just ramble and run around in the house so he was exploited badly but i digress uh i uh, i really like him and i think that it's really interesting this is a part of his life that i never knew happened so and it's, so it, it's really well she directed this because and, and i think mostly in part because she either minored or majored um no you told me she minored in philosophy. i think she minored in philosophy yes so this played in a lot into it and um I, I I love to see her take on on Nietzsche. Um, so I would don't, you say you would prefer maybe one of those films to have been? I I'm not sure be, because I I did like get attention how I, I liked and didn't like this film and we'll, we're gonna get okay, all into yeah, all we'll of get that. Into it. But um, 
to see the female perspective will be very interesting because of the contrast, but definitely I, my interest is much more piqued in her philo philosophical work. I feel like this was more about morality and uh, politics than it was about philosophy. And if she is a very philosophical director, I would love to learn more about that and see more of that in her work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude. What about you, Ron? Ooh. What of these films did you kind of catch into that caught um, your attention? Actually, I didn't really look into her other films. You didn't films. look into her no, other films. No, but I do want to see that. Uh, I would want to check the out one the one Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, Beyond that's Good probably and Evil. Probably yeah, good. yeah, I think I'd prefer that one over The Berlin Affair. I mean, I didn't look into the other ones except for the first ones that I mentioned. There are quite a few that I found on a uh, <clears throat> exclusive a uh, kind of server where I'm able to download film from and so I searched up her name to see what people excuse me bourgeoisie I, I'm not trying to be I, it's it's not not bourgeoisie actually it's just you know I don't know. I don't okay. know how to describe it, but it's, it's a service. So Members I, 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 added, <laughs> I added all of the films that people had requested by her, her most popular. Mm -hmm. And it is one called Interno Berlinis. That was the one that most people had seen. And I'm not sure. And this is by her? Yes. These are all her films. I yeah, don't... because I was going to mention that I, w I found it very confusing. So she's an Italian director. She is an the, Italian director. Who did a film on you know german nazis yeah but the language and the audio and the writing in okay English. so yeah that's you know like, so that is okay, that was the thing too like i thought messy. i when as a video file i just looked at the audio Awful. it had two audio things i automatically switched it to italian because i was like it has it's an italian movie mm -hmm. maybe the language is italian mm -hmm. yeah and then i looked i was like you know what? this doesn't sound right because mm -hmm. it wasn't matching up with the audio so I went to Criterion's website and it okay. says English on it. So I was okay. like, well, then English is the. But then there's some actors too yeah. that, they, that, that are speak Italian. Another language yeah. quite evidently are speaking something else than is being. Dubbed. Yeah, and it's just dubbed yeah, in English. Yeah, so dubbing, yeah. Th this is where I uh, had kind of gotten into how I, I, I really like EIO filmmaking. Uh, and for me, this felt like the anti GIO film. Because in GIO filmmaking, uh, we saw a lot of. It was all filmed in black and white. The very good example would be Argento, of course. But uh, he would film, not in black and white, I'm sorry, in, in, in silent. It would be all silent. And so all of the dubbing, regardless of language, whether it was English or German or, you know, French, whatever, he would allow them to speak their own language and then it would always be dubbed over every single uh. sound because all of it was filmed in silence. So... This Whoa. this started in the 60s, 70s. Uh, it was very, very... Yeah, it was obviously a very big genre, in, a big movement in genre, the genre, mm -hmm. and a uh, big genre movement. And so <laughs> I feel like this not only was a part of that, but it also made fun of it. Not made fun of it, but it felt like... Uh, the, the reason I said anti Gaio is because Gaio is so colorful and vibrant okay and, yeah actually i did and this felt very that. muted very yeah. muted, this felt know, very dark and grim and grim yeah it, if i could mention the great lars von trier um it, it <laughs> felt <laughs> it, 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 it felt like a very dogma era like it felt like watching dogville or uh something like late uh dogma, like dancer in the dark uh very just ugly, gritty, lo-fi stuff. Even Harmony Korine's early stuff, like Gummo, Trash Humper, really? stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that kind of gritty style, you know, it it, it felt very... It did. It did have that kind yeah. of style and, to and, it. And but I also, like... But it was very contrasted with, like, the design and the set and the shots that I they had. I will agree. That is one thing I meant to say. It was I, very contrasted. I, when because, I talked to you about this movie... And that conflicted me, honestly. <laughs> When I talk to you about this, you're like, oh, I'm so averse exploitation. <laughs> and, I, and that's when I was starting oh, it. God. And I was uh, I was like, all right, so I'm in for a great exploitation ride. And uh, and I was like, holy shit, this is good. Yeah. I, I'm really liking the cinematography. It's very Dude, muted. Yeah, I thought the yeah. cinematography was really good. Um, but yeah. I'm really the liking thing. the set design. Yeah. I, I thought it was very well. Those slow pans, those slow, long pans. Just they were very romantic in a way for me. They, well, it's the whole slow. film I is romantic. I wonder if that's on purpose too, because yeah. it's supposed yeah. to make you feel like you're like 
Yeah. Like, oh crap. Like, it kind of felt like a Lolita think. vibe to me. Yeah. Kind of like the inappropriate relationship where you're kind of happy that they're seeing each other again, but they're seeing each other again. Like, this is a man who severed. Ooh, uh, by the not way, see. spoilers. We can talk about the scenes. Are right? we? Are we? Spoiling? That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> we talk about whatever you want. All right. All right so okay. when you know in that famous dancing scene where she's doing oh, her lean and Oh Lord! Oh yes! Oh my Kendra, goodness! I was, in those I suspenders and those pants. Oh yeah! And oh my the, god! Yeah, the performance she gives, and then he gives her the severed head. Yeah. You know, this is a man who. Clearly, he is trying to avoid going into his Nuremberg trials because he is ashamed of what he's done, but he wants to clear his conscience by allowing his karma to catch on to him, which yeah, he says was, he's yeah. ashamed of working in daylight because... He's, yeah, that's why he's, he's done, the, that's night why he's the night porter. And, and, it, and then in a sense, yeah. when he sees her again, he, he is reminded of his past, and this is pretty much what this entire film is supposed to be about, mm-hmm. is two people being reminded of their past and then going on that memory lane. And then you see, it was essentially a karmic relationship for them because they return to each other and they end up in the same... Mm-hmm. She's rationing. She's back pretty much from what she was. The concentration. Yeah, she she's like rationing revert- food. She's back to her thin. Yeah, there's there's that scene there. where the jam's like on the. I think it's on the, the, the dresser. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and she, and she, and yeah, and then she's and just she's like eating, eating it, it off the floor and stuff. So yeah. it like really like reverted her back to... Reverted her. Like uh, she went from being, you know, the wife of an American orchestra or playwright or... Mm-hmm. And it's a conductor for conductor, the... Conductor, yeah. yeah. for the opera, I think. Exactly. And she goes from being, you know, from going from that, being the play toy of an SS officer and somehow surviving because of that relationship, and then going into being the wife of an, an orchestra, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus, I can't conductor? get it. Conductor? Yeah, the, yeah. I always think conductor, I think trains, and Thomas the Train comes up. And Thomas like, the Train. <laughs> Spooky. Uh, good. And then she goes back to being that, just because she went back to what she's known for so long. She reverted being to who she was. Yes, yeah, his little concert. girl, which was fucking creepy. And, yeah, and he, there was a quote that he said. Um, there was quite literally a scene where he was defending their relationship. Yes, I think and it's when he's talking to the, the he, other lady. Right, the... Yeah, no, it was during the dinner scene, and it's uh, I wrote it's composed of a glorious long take because of course I'd write that. Um, but Max tells someone that he's arguing with, she was my little girl, and she's exactly the same. Yes. I still love her. The oh same. yeah, and. That dynamic of him thinking of her as a little girl, yes. I, I the dynamic of her seeing that dress oh, and it reminding her of her childhood, uh, and, and and the fact that she was kind of willingly ish raped, but not raped. Well, by I mean, in a it sense, was, I feel like when you look into her eyes, the, because I mean, this is uh, Charlotte Rampling as Lucia. Yes, and Dick. Birkett? Birkett? Uh, it is... Um, let me get I it. I can't really say his name. It so. is Dick Borg- Borgant? Borgant? Oh, uh, Can somebody Bogand. get it? Bogard. Bogard. I'm so sorry. Dirk yeah, it would be Bogard. Bogard. And uh, Charlotte Rampling. Where's my assistant? Yeah, I know. Uh, Dirk Bogard is Max. And Charlotte Rampling is Lucia. Philippe Leroy, Leroy is Klaus. Was, was, was Klaus um, was, the monocle guy? Yes. I, was it yes. the guy that did monocle. the performance? Uh, yes, it was. No, no, no. Who, or no. Who the performance guy? Yeah, uh, Gabriel. Yeah, that performed naked. Yeah. There's a naked but he's, performance. Then naked for, but he's a Nazi Was he too? the guy that was in uh, La Ventura? Because that is Gabriel Ferst. See, it's just Ferretti. so fucking confusing because there's like Italian actors <laughs> and then there's... English, British actors, and then they're doing like and that. That is and I appreciate three different language mm-hmm. movies because, like, you know, it gives it that art if you know how to do it right. If you know how to like disconnect your three storylines, if you want to do three storylines, like, say, for example, Babel yeah. from Iñárritu. Oh yeah, Babel worked. But it, it, it worked. worked. There but- was different languages. She had not only a different language; she had different, you know, actors, which is fine. Oh, but yeah. I was just so confused. So, what is this considered? Well, even is this Dirk- considered Italian cinema? Is this considered like British it, cinema? It, it, I would say it's what? Italian because the director is it Italian. Italian, Italian cinema. But I did mean to ask you, especially you as a historian. Would this be something that is actually and could be 
historically relevant and historically accurate because you have these people that are, you know, SS, ex-SS soldiers or mm. ex-SS Nazis uh, marching around and speaking with heavy, heavy, you know, British accents. And they, uh, and this woman also who doesn't really look, Charlotte Rampling, is, she doesn't, yeah. when I picture a Holocaust survivor, it isn't her. It, it, it's not. And, like, uh, I, I like, don't know what? if that is a, but I mean, what is a Holocaust survivor what is supposed Holocaust to look like? like, like you know, what I mean like, is she doesn't. It just is know, very. It's, it's very times, unconventional, huh? and I'm not sure. Is that is that something that you know would it should it not be like German? And you know, they they talk about the Third Reich. They talk about a lot of these okay. things. Um, but so well, you do understand that she wasn't Jewish. She, from what I read, she had to be something like she some, like Polish. First or of something all, this like took place in Vienna. This all Vienna, I yes. Oh, Vienna. I knew, so I wanted was, to get that too. Yeah. She was, I believe, daughter of a Viennese socialist, or she was a socialist. Yeah, yes, yeah, so a communist. A, yeah, yeah, a yeah. communist. And they, at that time, actually, if historically speaking, if you go back to the first people that was sent to concentration camps back in like 1934, uh -huh. Dachau. It was mostly communists. Okay. They were okay. they were after the communists first. They have their dig so, in the at communists then, in the movie. <laughs> eventually, you know, after hazing the Jews, they eventually moved them all into concentration camps. But okay. primarily, they wanted to target you know people that were it just it, anti fascist. The, the thing is, yeah, and it it, it is anti fascist in a positive but, sort of way. I mean, for politically speaking, uh -huh. and it also has that subtle dig at at a at a like anti-communist views mm -hmm. uh which i yeah, love like, um yeah. but i don't know that that sense of it not being germ like you know german soldiers yeah because going back it felt to very question. strange exactly but because there was actually they did not but really... i knew it was vienna and i was going to tell you I, you know vienna is like see, my number one place why... in the world that i want to visit and it ruined <laughs> vienna for me i, I just vienna is so bleak it's okay we'll just, I, we'll just watch the before trilogy i need to watch the before trilogy again because time. man that was a horrific horrific view of vienna <laughs> I just, <laughs> I am just broken by Vienna. I don't know. Was it really that affecting? Uh, yes and no. I mean, yes and no. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into the nose. We haven't really talked about the nose. We've well, been, we've been just rambling on. I'm well, we've been talking mostly about the positives of it. I think. Uh, the, uh, I I I will. I can get into. Well, going my back to your question it. that you asked me, if whether it's historically, historically relevant, yeah. I would say no. Not relevant, but, but maybe accurate. Not it, accurate either. No. In, or in in order for it to be accurate, you have to have factual evidence okay. backing it up. They did not use or portray real um, names. All right. So, so then rewording. If it's all fictional, I mean, yes, maybe it could possibly be a rewritten story of a survivor. Uh, that is it. Okay. But unless it's known for sure, unless it tells you, oh, like, like no, no, no. Facts, and, and that, or like in a documentary. Series. Yeah, I don't, and I, and I don't mean I in, in the sense of a documentary, because, but I meant in the sense of like, is this something that could have really happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, like, like, a lot of worse yes. things happened. I no, mean, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I like with these soldiers. Did, oh, like them trying like, to with, like... With the, yeah, with, like, with the, this things, sort like, of hierarchy that existed. Like, just talk about it. Like, for example, the rape scene that the goes on. The rape scene. Was I, it a man or was it a woman? I thought it was one? a woman. Okay, the rape... Oh, let's talk... Oh, well, that's a let's weird... That's a weird scene. jump. <laughs> but okay, if you want to talk about the rape scene. Yes, uh, there was the oh. man raping another man while yeah. he was... We, was I thought it, At first, I thought it was... What's his name? Um, see, this movie kind of like... Klaus? This no, movie no, 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 really Klaus? messes with you. Yeah, with the it characters. really does. It's, it's like... Um, I thought it was... What's his name? Uh, Mario, the the witness, oh, Mario, because yeah, he did witness. say. Well, because oh, why would you before that just say I know? Because uh, Max tells him I've never told anybody what you did to get out. Who like, does he tell? He Max tells that to Mario oh, before before Max. he oh, before he invites yeah, him to were, go fishing. Yeah. Right. He's like I've never told anybody that. what you did to get out safely. Oh. So it sees like when that and then that scene jumps, it goes right to that scene right afterwards. Yeah, because it, it goes into flashbacks. But so, the flashbacks oh, are jumpy. They the don't way just that like it uses those they jump. Yeah. But yeah, go on. But yeah, so I I assumed it was him at first, but then I don't know. I guess it could be a rape. Uh, I'm not, well, I'm not no, sure. no, it wasn't. 
It wasn't not rape. It was only a rape scene. Because when you, I mean, you would only you assume it's rape scene, because it's in a concentration camp. I guess so, so yeah. Like, yeah. It just logically the, the, and like... The thing is... You know, morally it wouldn't make sense. But uh-huh. then again, this movie doesn't morally make sense at all. Not even logically. I, but I, I, still, I still like the art facts of it. But uh, go on. I did rewind that part about like three, four times to make sure it was a, uh, not done. Not, not, uh, that's how I shouldn't have said that. Uh. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm I will leaving. Say this Bye, the, guys. It was a good podcast. <laughs> this might be the uh, only yeah. time so, I would say it too, but... It, for like how gruesome the scene was, I thought it was like very like nicely shot. Yeah, it, you have. <laughs> thank it, you. It sounds. Thank you, it sounds thank you, so thank you, like no, messed no, up no, to say, right. no, no, but it's, a, right. it's it is like you have. Yeah. You have like the was, people behind yes, the beds, the bars, the bars in, bars. in front of them. Fuck is beautiful. And then it and it's like a slow, a like slow pan. pan. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you, as you can tell, I love my slow pans. <laughs> so uh, I I loved that, and yes, it pans out to these people with very dead panned faces, har har. Yeah. Uh, that was such a view to see. And then, like you're viewing one one shot, you're seeing this happening, and then you see this happening, and then it goes back. Then it goes no, it goes to her, right? It will, yeah, it it, 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 it transitions from the guy the it. guy <laughs> fucking the other guy, and and it, it, you can tell his arm is very hairy. Yeah, and he is pleasuring himself. Yeah. and I was like, a, a woman so wasn't could rape. be doing I guess that, not, it wasn't, but no. when I see, no like, no, so see that's why it wasn't rape. That's what I was gonna get out. <laughs> It was just weird, you I'm know? Sorry. It just was weird, it, yeah. and, and, and this, if I can, this kind of segues into my issue with the film as a whole because as much as I want to believe that these two were in love and were destined to be yeah, together and destined to die together, it, th- this is like extreme Stockholm syndrome, syndrome via Holocaust, the movie. <laughs> and yes, I yeah, don't it, like it that, yeah. Um, because he he very much took advantage of her, and as much yeah. as she yeah. may have liked it, it doesn't feel. I, I, I feel like it does, and it doesn't validate it enough. I no, I need to watch it again. No, see here, I I felt the same way, conflicted, but I don't think that she liked it. I think At, that she just used it as the same survival skill that he was using it. She, you, because in a way, if you truly really see it, she kind of feels like, I think the only reason why I made it out alive was because this guy kept yeah, me alive. I, All I had to do was just do what he wanted me to do to him or mm-hmm. whatever. And then I would get fed. Yeah. I would be safe and alive. And she survived because of him yeah, in a sense. Do I, you think she would have survived if it wasn't for him? Though? I, guess so. I, I, I would say that I too, but... But I, oh, good, go, go ahead. No, no, go okay. ahead. Because I, I feel like um, she like goes back to him, so there has to be a part of her that like but wants see, to. That I don't part know, of her that wa- that goes back that's grooming behavior when you think about it too. Like it she was, was so really accustomed to him. Yeah, it, it, accustomed it doesn't. Be the word. It, it feels like it can be a love story, and it can be like this sort of. She's so used to being around this person. Like when it started, it was very playful and also not playful, yeah. which I really liked about that scene. I, it was very and conflicting. Like, like, okay, am like, I supposed to be like worried or? Yeah, because she, she's like screaming so, yeah. and then laughing, and I'm like, is she being raped? Is she liking this? By the way, is that performance both? was incredible. All of her, she's the one wonderful. in the in the hotel, she right? She is wonderful. Yes, yes in the okay. hotel. Okay. When they finally when they finally meet, meet in the hotel, for, in the hotel the, yeah. and. And, and I, I feel like that's my problem with the movie because it all originated from her being a, you know, a Holocaust survivor and eventually returning to someone who, yes, saved her life, but held her captive. And it says, and it's shown in the movie, it, like, he protected her yeah. to an extent. Yeah. It was to an extent, girl. but it, he all it also shows him abuse her and torture her because he has to. Uh, so I don't I don't know. It just it feels like maybe it is a love story, but it also doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't feel like it justifies all of it enough. I, I I'm conflicted about that. I I, I do like it. I, especially, I, I love the ending, and I feel like that solidifies the love story. Especially, okay, but we're like, not at the ending. I yet. know, but but for I just briefly mentioning that's really what solidifies it as a love story for me. But 
up until that point, I was very conflicted about the relationship. Yeah. What about you, Ron? What are your thoughts on the relationship? Like, what did you think about their relationship, or like if there was a relationship? Because I don't even fucking know either. It. I don't know. I feel like she, I'm not exactly sure because he's like a like. I guess he's like a scientist or a doctor. He oh. is. Did, ever, did they say? Form, no, well, but I had to read up uh-huh. on it. No, like he was like a doctor. I would say he went in as like a fake doctor, but he was just there. For Lucia. Oh, okay. okay. So what happened is <clears throat> he was um, an SS soldier and uh, he ended up, yeah, faking his way into being a doctor just to get like pictures of her, yeah. which is oh, like, and that's why that they're scene when they're oh, by the way, that's so many where scenes. they're just all naked with shoes. That still oh, makes me feel God. so oh, yeah, so right. low as fuck. Like I loved it. I, uh, <laughs> it was just like oh. like. It made me feel so uncomfortable because it's like, okay, well, why are you wearing shoes? You just might as well, like, leave them without shoes. But, like, no, they're, they're wearing shoes. And I don't know, that thing with the shoes. And it just gets me, like, not that I don't want them wearing shoes, but it just... Oh, that's just, not, it just throws you off. Being a history major and seeing all the photographs and all the documentaries, <laughs> I don't see them wearing shoes. Oh, God. So okay. it was much less naked like that, wearing shoes. <laughs> well, you know... So, it was just a very new scene to me, but go ahead, Ron. Continue <laughs> on your um, okay. So he's a, I guess, faked his way to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, I guess, I don't even know what to say, man. It's like really like, <laughs> yeah. it's like super like confusing, not confusing, but like, I think the only reason why she was with him even in the concentration camp was because i mean obviously a concentration camp is probably like the most horrible thing yeah without saying so i mean aside from hell but then again i don't know maybe if you're on the devil's (laughs) so i guess this guy was like the only person that was like kind of nice to her nicer than anyone else probably so that's probably so which goes to the stockholm syndrome and I don't know. I guess it's That's, conditioning. Like you said, like grooming. It, it is conditioning. That's why when she grooming. saw him again. Yeah, you're yeah. going to fall in love. I mean, and I say this because I'm a big, like, I've been watching so much true crime stuff about, like, Ted Bundy and Birch Told, and I just finished five hours of ne- Leaving Neverland. Five it, hours? It's oh, four man. plus the, 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 the Oprah, the Oprah watch special, it. which is even better than the whole There's thing. A, where the fuck is this Oprah it, special? It's all on HBO. Okay. But anyway, I'll catch so, on so all of this has just made me so accustomed to seeing it, and I'm just it, it perturbs me because I, I, I don't feel, like I said, I don't feel, I, I feel like this movie does and doesn't really shoot what it's going for, but at the same time, I have to suspend my disbelief because, as I said, we live in a culture and a time now where we see and interpret things in such a different way. I mean, with the Me Too movement and with the Times Up movement and with oh God, female I empowerment. Want, I don't want to ring that. No, up. but I mean, you 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 have to it's, with a film that is, is a sexploitative film. Yeah, you. This is a different. You see things through a different scope. When I read a reviews like now, you know, even before Me Too started, Ebert hated the fuck oh, out yeah. of this movie. Yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ebert I saw said that. it was yeah, trash. It. Yeah. The New York Times trashed it. They, yeah. yeah. A they, lot of people um I I love Letterboxd. And so a lot of people on Letterboxd are always a uh, uh you know, bashing it for its use of, you know, sexualizing women and using uh like I said, female gays very uh non-traditional sort of almost pornograph non-pornographic pornography um which is very strange and uh it didn't feel derivative for a female director Mm -hmm. which shocked me yeah no i think i read somewhere in an article that i was reading about her that she wasn't aiming to be for this to be like a feminist movie this wasn't supposed to be but it is a strong female lead though but it is she's not okay that last part, no, but it is. A, I, I would she argue, wasn't, it is though. A, I, I would argue it is a very feminist film, it's be, not. because. Uh, let, uh, but it it's is. It's about a woman that. Okay, no, because yes, the male hero and all, but it is about female empowerment. She does everything in her power to survive, like you well, said. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess she in a way, this is mostly is, like mental. Um, in a sense, like mental feminism, because I mean, she did use her advantages. I mean, when a girl sees that a guy is being too nice to her, obviously she knows. Oh my god, this this guy wants something with me. 
the girl right. just like automatically and if, and if it's not true she assumes so she's gonna just coerce herself into it and say okay well if I can survive if this guy just you know favorites me and but I guess she didn't expect all the sick stuff, or maybe she did, yeah. and then she liked it. Yeah, maybe. and then that's yeah. why she kept. Yeah, because there's that scene where like he breaks the glass and yeah. he steps, up, and then like she puts her hand under his under foot, his and then foot she and, and he stomps. Yeah. Down. yeah, and she was like cool with it. She was complacent. Yeah, with it, so. it's very like it reminded me of Phantom Thread actually, like hardcore Phantom Thread. Oh. <laughs> PTA, um, PTA, uh, but um, PTSD, PTA. As far as feminism, there was uh, something that it really caught my attention and it was in the sinking scene where you know uh she's literally topless and like a fingering herself you know in front of all of this group like this huge uh, group of men and i i feel like somehow that manages to me the be the most feminist part of the film because she's putting herself out there she is like i don't think totally she wanted to do it or did you what she what was feels not did you get sexualizing do you know, herself do you know that scene do you know what yes, scene that's that, yeah. that, that singing scene where mm-hmm. you know the infamous the fucking cover of the i know she did marlene dietrich bitch yeah so i just i feel like that i got this i i just feel like that scene for me especially it felt very empowering to her character do you because think that she felt good doing that I in mean, front of all these I, officers. I'm not and- sure. I mean, obviously, when I saw it, I, I the, mean, it's, she's like in a room with like the people that are like holding her captive, exactly. So or, and killing killed her but entire think, family. But but she, but it, but she was like. I, I don't know. Was man. she forced <laughs> oh, wait, she to was do this? this. But, she was but, not, she, but she was not forced. But she was to do performing this. also she too. She was performing, yeah, which is like perfor- so. That's why I don't know if, and if she, there is a distinction between it being a performance or it being because she's being forced to do it. Yeah, I guess that's like. Is she enjoying it? A, is that, she doing it because it's empowering? Or well, is she doing but that it has to be on purpose. That, mean, that's like what they're trying to it, convey, it, it, right? Because right? that's what I, that's, that's the vibe I felt from it too. But if if she is quite literally like looking at some dude and then sticking her hand down her pants and pleasuring herself, there is obviously a level of enjoyment to the, all of every the, the scene, everything that is happening. I feel like she did enjoy being in control and in power and being that one person that had every single person's eyes on her. I don't know. I think in that in that way to me, it felt very empowering to her. But I, maybe I'm putting too much emphasis on it because I love that scene so much. But uh, I, I I just I really like that. I was like, oh my god, this is supposed to be so exploitative, and yet she managed to totally subvert that to a way a, a place where okay. it was her in control. It was all eyes on her. I can be topless. I can finger myself, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Like, because this is about me. Yeah. Like, it's not about you. Yeah. And okay, I, it's I, I, not yeah. about the men. Yeah, it's I get about that. me yeah. having control of the fucking room right now. And then actually, and I loved that. Not thinking about it, uh, historically speaking. Oh, I here mean, we go. This is, this is, <laughs> this is here we go with the history facts and you with them history facts. Um, going back to it, it is in 1974 mm-hmm. when this movie was released, and the feminist movement was pretty big at that time. I mean, we had Roe versus Wade, I think, in 1973. Oh my God! We so did. right after, I mean, so the feminist movement is just like really going for it. So I guess in a sense, I can see where you're coming from, where there might be like the connotation that it's empowerment, female empowerment, where yeah. even though you find yourself in the worst situation which is a fucking concentration camp where they're yeah. starving you and they're abusing you, you you remain alive. You can still remain true to you. You can still perform the fuck out of Malene Dietrich. You can still, <laughs> I don't know, find pleasure <laughs> in being abused. I don't you fucking know. You just got to hope uh, an SS officer that. likes you, I guess. Exactly. Right? I know. See, right? I, that's I mean, so problematic I hope he me. responds to me back on Tinder. Look, like, <laughs> I think about that and I think, okay, what if I didn't have papers? When I ice... I, I have to okay. hope. I, oh, okay. I, I, have to, I, I have to hope I find like a really hot ice. Getting too yes, real. I have to ho- ho- like hope I find a really hot ice officer. <laughs> like I don't, you know, because <laughs> so like, we're we're thinking about the Holocaust, and I know that it's very unfair to compare the two. Yeah, it's but it, not to compare, not really. Uh, uh, but you know what? But, I, you know where I'm coming from in the sense but the of that dehumanization the dehumanization is, of someone is very still present and. and and the fact that it is very much becoming attached to someone 
by a non-romantic means. Mm-hmm. And, and that is where the disconnect that I have with it being romance comes from. Well, yeah, from. see, that's why, and that, as I was asking you, Ron, mm-hmm. like, what your thoughts are oh, on the relationship. Oh, I don't think it is romance. Yeah. Back to no, what we're not? saying. I love that. Because he even says it's not uh, really well, because remember when he's talking to that lady when he's when he says that she was her little girl, oh, she yes. says yeah. she says it's such a romantic story. Yeah, and he's like it's not a romantic <gasps> oh, story. Yeah. Oh, he's like oh, he's like it's, he said it's a biblical story. It's and a biblical then, story, and then he goes into the whole yes, the head, yes. yeah, and then, so, I, and then I yeah, and then I guess she was the portrayal of Salome. I and, so. and I love that, and I I, I love the biblical allegory. I thought it fit in very very oh, well. Did you, did you actually catch the biblical allegory? Because I, I mean, I yeah, from a Christian very, church. Yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, so basically, yeah, don't have got all the biblical facts and the historical um, facts. Yeah, you know, it, it's that whole thing. You know, you shouldn't have birthday parties. You know, that whole thing because when you have, you have a birthday, uh, that girl that asked for someone's severed head on her birthday. <gasps> So Jehovah's Ooh. a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate Never. birthdays uh, and or other holidays Shit. because of because of this. Uh, so I like that that was incorporated and and, I, and I'm sure it was very very thematically uh, heavy biblically. I am very sure it was, uh, but I didn't think about it in a biblical aspect until he said it's a Bible story. I was like, oh mm-hmm. shit, should it have been this whole time? Because I thought it was a sex exploitation so film, according to Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, it was. It was mostly Nazi exploitation. But, it wasn't I mean, you can though. Take it, in any- it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. wasn't though. Yeah, it actually wasn't. I mean, it opened I, the doors. What I gathered from it was I, mostly just a romance. For I, me, I, it was a romance because I felt like they were attached. But at the same time, I was like, no, it was a survival story. It, and yeah. then it goes back to being well what the fuck is it exactly. i think i would say it's and, and a survival think, yeah. story it's just this dude it's like so taking would... advantage and control of this girl in the concentration camp he sees her again he's like now's my chance to get back <laughs> to yeah. get her back well, yeah, yeah but yeah. see the way it all happens and the way it all plays out is so strange it almost feels like he's stalking her at first like oh, the way yeah. he's, let's uh, talk the about opera, that scene the, at the opera. Would, yeah, that that's pretty good. Scene. Yeah, that okay. So Shit. see that just yeah. Ron, those those shots. What do you oh, think about that yeah. shot where they're just looking? It's just her, and then it's just him looking at There's, her. Oh yeah, yeah. That mm-hmm. scene, that whole scene where he's just you just uh, where he's just sitting there and he's just like looking at her and you just see his expression and you mm-hmm. feel her tension as yeah, he is when, looking at and her. And he kind of like like raises his head like that's right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I I still yeah. control you. Yeah. 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 And then he like leaves after that. And then yeah, she turns mm-hmm. around and he's, he's not. He's not, yeah. he not there. Le- God, dude, I cried. Beautiful. It's just that. See, there. That's what I mean. There's such beautiful parts in this that, film. Yeah. That I. I and that it, is it why I do believe it is a Criterion film because it is so. There's so okay. much nuance in these characters. Even, but yes and no, because although I, I do feel like there could be a bit more development, we could have kind of learned more about them as they went on, but I still like that there was a lot of mystique behind each mm-hmm. of the two. But then at the same time, doesn't that hinder it? Because it, like I said, it feels like Stockholm Syndrome. Mm-hmm. I feel like with just a little bit more backstory, it may not have felt like Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, yeah. Um, they, it just, uh, maybe it's a screenplay kind of issue, and that's a technicality. But um, I don't know. That, that That's just really that one glaring issue that I, I, yeah. I, I and it's not even an issue. It's just, it, 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 it makes it difficult to label the genre. Because what is it? Like you think it's romance, you don't see it as you see that as survival. Yeah. I am really kind of like in the I middle. Have no idea. In, yeah, I'm, I, I'm in the are, middle. Are, are I, I am in the middle yeah. because I do see it as a romance film, but I also see it as a like as a, I mean, survival film. No, I mean, would it <laughs> like be Rob like, said, I mean, like I'm if, telling if you, someone yeah. is There's, being held captive? And then falls in love with their, like, you know, captor 15 years later. That is a horror film. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, so I mean, essentially, it, it this essentially is a horror film. Also, that's why I'm telling you, like, in the like, essence that it gives he, off, I could see it being more, he, you know, into... He, yeah, it was, it's John, it's, it, it's a psychological drama. It, it, see, it is psychological. He, he seduces her all over again. I, if we're, can we, can we get... 
to the end now? I mean... Well, I mean, we're, uh, well, I didn't even reaffirm. <laughs> I wanted to say, because, I mean, how many how many minutes are you going to be doing, Ray? Well, just to mention, to tie okay. in. Cause okay. So, I did forget to mention the reason why we're all here today is to discuss Criterion films that have either had low rankings on, like, oh, Rotten yes. Tomatoes uh -huh. or, like, any, you know, respectable source of, you know, film review. Mm -hmm. Or, and... Not or and, you know the fact that they are part of the Criterion film because Criterion films are mostly known for being contemporary and classic films that have been either resonating because of art or because of great directing, great the filmmaking, technical aspects, in general, the yeah. technical and the visual aspects, and of course also the artistry that goes into making a film, which is why sometimes it's confusing when things like Chasing Amy end up in the fucking Criterion <laughs> Collection and you don't even want to oh do a God. reprint, you don't even want to update the fucking cover photo on it because it fucking sucks. Is it out of it's print Kevin right now? It's Kevin Smith. You do not include that shit into the Criterion Collection. I think it, it has a... It probably you has another company that distributes clerks. them now. Oh, God. They probably I, lost I the have, distribution rights I, for I it. I have to PC. watch it. I don't. I was going to in preparation. To just kind of... Nah, no, well, that was with not, the other... With I know, I know, I know. I, I yeah. know, I, I don't... Yeah, but... Yeah. But right here, right now, we're here to talk about respectable filmmaking. Respectable. As, I, I did find this very I respectable. Would like to say. I did <laughs> like it. I will say I did. Um, but like, I would just like to say that this film did get a 68% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, Roger mm, Ebert. Roger Ebert. Uh, Ebert, yeah. he gave it like a what? So he, negative zero. he uh, probably oh, gave it a negative <laughs> number. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's so, I don't fucking know, dude. I just read the words. I don't fucking spell them. He's so wonderful, critic. I love him. But the thing is, you have to think about the time and place. I think that at the time... Uh, but I don't... Did he review the, look, it at the look, time and place? Has, well, no, to be no. Ebert the, was more recent. But uh, as far as criticism goes for The Night Porter... Um, oh, and it also... Cavani was... Well, go on. Well, yeah. It received the 68% on yeah, Tomatoes and, of course... I, yeah. I honestly don't really trust anything on Rotten Tomatoes past when Rotten Tomatoes opened, whenever mm -hmm. the hell that was, because... I mean, if you add in scores from before, like... Yeah, uh, they don't really care. Like, from the 60s, <laughs> 70s film, it's not gonna... Yeah. That's true, but at the same time, I mean... Maybe. It's kind of good to see both perspectives, um, like you said. I, I, you know, I at do, the time of its release, it yeah. was like, oh my god, no, it's like the and, worst thing and, and that's see, that, been that's what made. They, and then there are still some people who can see it, kind of like Mother, or kind of like... Right. The House of Jack Bill. Yeah, they yeah. watch it. They don't get the psychological perspective of uh, it, or like what the notation is. Yeah, but, then but you have they like, go and review it badly, and so that's why you have to sometimes view these things. I mean, this film. I'm gonna say it again. This film has a lower rating than Chasing Amy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. yeah, it, ha it has to be for the controversial. And aspect exactly of it. it. Exactly it has that. to be because of the controversy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah. it's not really that a film is poorly made. It's just that either some parts are hit and miss, and some parts were hit and miss for me. And I did want to talk about that. But yeah, there so are Ron, of... we're just gonna leave it at survival. So, survival. Film. I would say uh -huh. a psych psychological drama. Yeah, that sums it up that works for That's... me. Psychological drama is perfect because uh -huh. I would not consider it romance either. All right. Well, I feel like we've we've pretty much talked about like the good parts of it. We just like yeah. in general parts of it. But I want to the go cinematography. Ahead and talk about um, yeah. What else? Uh, how? Well, I want to talk about the is. bad parts first, and then we can talk about the good parts, kind of like the old classic way. And so, well, also just female director. She did great. Yeah, as a female director, yeah. They, but, I, I, mean, I love that female directors, you know, at the time were actually recognized. I had no idea they, that they you know, were. At yeah. least, even if it was for controversy. Uh, you know, in a time where Fulci and Bava and the and, Argento. and Argento and even Pasolini were still and at there. And then he got murdered. And then he got, you know, he's <laughs> run over and you know, he got a pole shoved in it. But, you know, before all this <laughs> happened, uh, I, I like that we had filmmakers that people paid attention to. That's cool that yeah, were so, women. I but, miss that. <laughs> but there were some parts, like I, like I said, like if it would have just stuck to like it's original language because like when i watch historical films like unless you're gonna give me like the full-on like perspective like there is at least some backup you know for me to believe it's an actual uh, okay. historical film 
you know, not just like the concentration camps. Because yeah. I was actually like, okay, it looks like a concentration camp, but with those shoes on, honey, <laughs> that house shoe, <laughs> I don't feel it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But so what you're saying they sh- they should have had like German actors play the? Maybe not like full on German actors, but maybe they should have had the German actors for the SS officers, or maybe probably. Some... I I do know that at the like it's an older movie. Obviously, it's 1974. Mm-hmm. Like usually, like when they cast, but it's usually for American movies. That's why it's so weird when they cast like German like Nazi actors. They usually just get like somebody British. Yeah, like British is yeah, always like a bad guy. Everyone in this film. not even yeah. Brit- <laughs> like British is a bad guy, but they have like the most. I'm not. I'm gonna say it, like they have a lot of features that kind of go no. What do you mean? Like yeah, they. The, no, not not. Uh, I would say that they would look like Nazis, but oh, you say <laughs> Nazis? <laughs> oh Lord! No, but I mean, so they had Nazis. Have Nazi saying. features? No. So this is Nazi propaganda, no, look, guys. Okay, going just so back we know. To the, going back to the historical facts. Okay, so like when Adolf Hitler, you know, had mm-hmm. his like Volk ideal, and he wanted his. Um, is that what people. we're calling it? An idea. <laughs> okay, it's fucking propaganda. It's oh, yeah, that's, that is, what the fuck that is true. Like, they, there was never anybody that was like, um, like, like blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, no, like I've wasn't. seen the pamphlets and I've seen like yeah. pictures of like how German people, how the ideal German Volk people were supposed to look like. And if you did not look like that, you were immediately deemed as like you were pretty much useless. Not German. Not no. German. <laughs> You're a fucking gypsy, a communist, a, a Russian. Gypsy con- a and, and, and they, they have their, their dig they at were, communism. So uh, that's just, I'm not saying that British people are Nazis. I'm just saying <laughs> oh, that, you go. know, there might be some white people, white British people, you know, that look like Nazis. That, but they're not Nazis, though. <laughs> no. They can play uh, a Nazi Full disclosure. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not saying anybody's a Nazi, okay? Nobody's a Nazi here. Um, oh shit, Jamie! Um, the real Nazi just got back. Uh-huh. Uh, you had been <laughs> talking about the uh, criticism and controversy of the film, and so I, I like that. Uh, you know, you're talking about the good things and bad things. One of the yeah, well, things that it was celebrated for was actually they, the Italian uh, industry celebrated. "Quote unquote," her courage in dealing with the theme of sexual transgression and simultaneously castigating for the controversial manner in which she presented this transgression within the context of the Nazi Holocaust narrative. Um, yeah, are you on Wikipedia? I am. Do not read shit from. <laughs> that is I the am. first rule of but, my show. You do not use Wikipedia well, as a first it's source. From it's actually from. Actually, I use Wikipedia it's, too. It's, <laughs> it, it's from Ebert's review from '75, actually from the Chicago Times. Oh, shit. So, uh, so he did yeah, do a that he then. he actually wrote a very Afterward. very good review on it where he talked about the film, even if he didn't like it. He talked about what you know, it was portraying. Person. He understood it, and and mm-hmm. I think that also plays into. Yeah, no, I I understood it too, but I I, mean, I, I don't think there. that I would like want to watch it again. Like by the end, oh, no. when they were rationing, oh, I was like, no. I want. You know, and, and yeah, that I, is something I, I wanted to talk about, which is, is why I wanted the it. The length, yeah. Is Doctor, you talk about the length? No, no go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'll say it's. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like thirty minutes too long. It's like two hours. I think the runtime is like a hundred. No, no. A hundred and like fifty some minutes. Yeah. One hundred and fifty-eight so point. One hundred and fifty-eight. Two hours. Uh, point fifty-nine. Uh, not including credits. <laughs> okay, so. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, I remember. Not included. I don't think there was credits. Yeah, because yeah, I, I like there was credits. Oh, there was. There was. Oh yes, long, was there. Oh god, long. they took forever. It was. I don't know if you guys actually noticed, but like obviously she was really, really trying to get those Pasolini kind of. Vibes yes, because it was and Italian. And Bellucci kind of. Like I get it, but like sister, I want to see like your own thing. Like I know you're trying to jarmusha, but <laughs> like do your own yeah. thing. Like I would appreciate it more if she would have given me more of her kind of idea because i did feel like it was a little bit more like possibly like even some of the shots were a little bit like possibly but she she still did great you know mm-hmm. in directing the film uh but yeah go ahead ron you, you were gonna say about oh the, it's like i feel like it's like 30 minutes too long it should have been like 90 yeah because because around the 90 minute mark i was like all right it has to be like kind of wrapping up and i like 
moved the mouse to see yeah, where the time really? was and it was like 30 minutes left and i was like "Ooh, it's like another 30 minutes yeah, and that's the whole like them in their apartment and rationing mm-hmm. their food like that was that 30 minutes that, really yeah. oh shit dude yeah because like it, it reaches its peak where you're like okay so what's gonna happen next okay so here we go we're gonna start going down the slope of mm-hmm. what's gonna happen the outcome the ending but no, it's just 30 minutes of fucking rationing. It's like that movie, Ghost Story, where it's that I person that eating movie, that so fucking fight, piece of cake for five me. minutes. Fight. My Rude, parents that person, hated that. That person. Or that ghost. Her name is Rooney Mara. I didn't she deserves some I just watched respect. that five minute, and I was there staring. Yes, you should were, stare at Rooney Mara eat like, a pie for five minutes every day. Like, no. My parents hated it. They're like, why did you make me watch a movie? With a person eating five, because it's like art. Eating it's painful. Five minutes. Because this woman had just that? lost her husband, Ghost had no idea with how to Casey cope. Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara. But I, going I, was, off topic, I, oh, I, thought, I thought you were talking about that Peter Straub, like. Oh uh, yeah, I know uh, ghost story, but the, yeah, go, uh, like, I think it's like 1970 something. Yeah, no. yeah, when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, Affleck, I know. Gotcha. It, it, it's a new. <laughs> it to be one it's, of the Affleck's, It's a new A20 newer A24 film where uh, Casey Affleck. It's on Canopy died. too. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, very, by the way, shout out to Canopy. Shout out to Canopy. Pay us, please. Uh, we love you. Some of us uh, can't afford Prime. We have to be fucking students uh-huh. to get free good movies. Yeah. Hey, like, I'm struggling here just to keep that primer in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, yeah. So one of, like, the downfalls of it was definitely that it was just a little bit excessive with mm-hmm. some of the scenes. Maybe they were a little bit too prolonged. Um, like I said, I didn't like that it didn't have, like, a cohesive language. What were your thoughts on the language? Like, were you okay with that? Or the dubbing was, like... I mean, the dubbing, it was noticeable. It still wasn't really that big of a deal for me. Not really? No. Yeah. I could. I, I could see I how I could be. I feel the honesty in like the this, the lines, not the lines, but like when they were having their dialogues. I didn't feel anything. Really. Oh, like on in those it scenes was just when like, they for me it was just words. What really attracted me to the film was just the acting, the way that the characters kind of like had that body language with each other. Because other than that, I felt like the script was a little bit too bland, but. Yeah, I didn't uh, feel like that, yeah. anything resonated to me because usually, like, I'm used to seeing because, like, shit that I love to watch is like a lot mm-hmm. of Wong Kar Wai, a lot of Fellini. Give me some like poetry shit, but, you know, some Wim Wenders. That's what I like to where mm-hmm. every line is a piece of fucking art. So right. when I go out of my way to watch movies like this, and uh, usually I can find good scripts. I can I can find good script writing, good uh, dialogue, good like you know chemistry with with the lang- language, whatever. But this one was just really bland for me. Like, I didn't feel very, like, I was paying attention to what they were saying. I was mostly paying attention to what they were doing. Do what they, okay. So, yeah. that was a thing for me. That, that's, yeah, that makes sense. With the scenes where, talking about the scenes where they're, like, in English, like, um, when Max is talking to... Well, the overall yeah. dubbing, I think, right? You said just the delivery didn't feel the del- right. No, just the delivery. Not really the du- the dubbing. Just, like, the delivery the of the lines. But the dubbing is the delivery, like, you know? You know how yeah. sometimes when you do... Because, like, I've, I've tried to, you know, write my own scripts, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, like, when you do script writing, you want to make sure that the dialogue feels like it's natural, but it's also, like, you know, they're going to say important things. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I'm accustomed to. So when they weren't really <laughs> saying nothing much, just the only thing I remember was My Little Girl, because that was fucking creepy. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. you're talking about lines um, in the movie? Lines like what? in the movie. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh. like the writing that was... Yeah, the writing. I would say like, there's the directing nothing... was delivered. Directing was very well delivered. I think she did a good job with that. Right. Uh, but the, the script... I, I feel like it is a very subtle script. Bland. And with the subtle script comes the blandness. I don't know if uh obviously the film did not aim for being bland or underdeveloped no, because but the acting did, scenes were what was supposed to grab your attention ver- not really what they were very saying, much so. i understand that but you and, know, for me and uh, personally yeah I think. And, and you know with stuff like the overdumbing we can't really complain i mean we can and can't because that was just the way italian That's, filmmaking worked yeah, at the time. Does it all the time yeah I, it was a very very big centerpiece of italian filmmaking and it's never gonna really i mean we can't go back and change back history all of the films that we're going to watch from the Ital- of italian cinema cinema from this time kind of have that correlation and so uh it, it does it does take you out of it but uh and sometimes a bit too much but 
eh, it's forgivable, at least for me, since I've just watched so much Italian cinema that is it oh, isn't. Come on, you're talking to like. But not right, not like... enough as you, right? Not enough of you. Yeah. But but you know, I I also don't. Obviously, this doesn't compare to anyone like. Bussolini or anyone no, I don't I think like, that he's uh, incomparable but I mean she did a good job trying to but not it was I wanted to see more of her essence you know yes I wanted to see more of what she can deliver to me maybe that I would have felt a little bit more connected to the story not that I wanted to be connected like that right. but I always try to find a connection to the story yeah. that I'm watching mm-hmm. every time like either with the character well, I mean, that's how you get invested into that's how the... you get invested it, clearly that's why cinema is such a big thing for me because it's like right. psychologically emotionally invests me into something and not many things can captivate me that way that... I am a commitment phobe I will admit <laughs> that and I am yeah. only committed to cinema probably I have uh, same uh, but I uh, that actually brings up a, a good issue that I uh, wanted to bring up with you being that the film is so exploitative and things you know watch but it wasn't as hardcore it, it wasn't as that it, it really wasn't it, it, it was a very artful film it was. Probably, in, in 1974 in some, it probably was like it, it, super it, oh, like yes. crazy and wasn't that when they were yeah. doing that like intense porn videos because they just got the v the vcr out wasn't it or was it I think that was more of a... Yeah, they dude. Were, they were still in the cinemas. The porn was in the cinemas. The, the porn time. was still in the porn cinemas. Porn was still in cinemas. But they were doing the porn bit, the porn... Yeah, even... In the porn, same porn, manner. In the same porn, gritty manner. I guess so, yeah. Just, and come out to, like, I think the early 80s or late 70s, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. We learned something new today, kids. Porn <laughs> was in VHS in the 1980s. I'm trying to become a porn connoisseur. Porn <laughs> 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 Soda collection starting with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, Obviously. boy. See you in a couple of days. But anyways, so Ron, what about you? Like, what were some parts that you didn't like? Because those were the only two parts for me. That's why it kind of lowered so. Um, for me. I would say, yeah, the, the I didn't like th- that they would like try to or she would try to convey something like in the movie. Um, like and not really say it. She tried to be like subtle, like with the whole like. um like so that dancing scene where they show the decapitated head yeah, the seven, and then yeah. you kind of from that scene you kind of get from her like reaction that it was something that she wanted and you kind of get that yeah. and then right afterwards it's like him saying like exactly what that scene meant and that happens like um i can't ex- remember exactly but that one's the only one that stuck with me but that happens a few yeah. times in this movie where they'll show you something yeah the and, flashbacks yeah it was and the then main yeah part. And, then, and then when it comes back he's like explaining it like exactly what that flashback meant and i was like I, yeah i feel like you could have like not done that as much yeah, maybe so like in some let, scenes that are really important yeah, you could do that that's true. but not so much like you don't have to do it all the time yeah and like, i feel like, like that viewer... was like yeah Cause it, I was like, oh snap! Like they're not really like hand holding you here. They're letting you like figure out what's going on, and you. Yeah. And then the next scene, or like right after, they afterwards, tell you exactly it, what happened. He, so he says you it. don't get to really let the scene or what it means to like sink in and let you, the viewer, mm-hmm. interpret it. Because I mean, for me, that's why I love cinema because it lets you yeah. also interpret it in a certain way. David Lynch is. Phenomenal at that. <laughs> he is. Shut uh, up. I also but, I also don't feel like a lot of those scenes digested, but um, like the flashbacks, like the fla- mm-hmm. I like that the flashbacks I, were I, very jumpy. They didn't just yeah. like smoothly transitioned. I like that it was just instantaneous because yeah. it gave it that popping effect that was not very present in the oh, film like it's very low key. And it, it'll happen really quickly too, where like where it flashes back to him, like she's naked, like in a room, and he's like yeah. shooting a gun like at her feet. And then oh, it'll I cut like that. back to them yeah, like in the hotel, so, like, and you're just if like you're not paying attention to these scenes. You're gonna miss it. You yeah. have to really like sit down and like s- watch this movie. Get your beer. Get cozy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's get your crocs yeah. off. <laughs> Josh, that's a shout out to Josh in case he hears it. Shout out. Uh, what was I gonna tell you? Um, you were talking about. Well, yeah. Well, actually, Ron was talking about the jumpy scenes, oh, yes. and, but you, right. you the, talked about how flashbacks. you would prefer it that they didn't just immediately tell you, "Oh, um, well, this is what it meant." Yeah, because I want it to mean something to me. Too. I, I, <laughs> Not I really. feel like the flashbacks uh, helped the story a lot, but also were a detriment in the sense that through these flashbacks, we saw all of 
her relationship with him. You know, we saw oh, how yeah. Did it was anybody count basically, how many flashbacks? It, I didn't count them, but we see we'll more flashbacks. Her, her quite, you know, behaviorally accustomed to this individual, even if he may be protecting her as a Nazi. Um, uh-huh. It just is, it, it, it's a weird dynamic. And to have it again um, is, is, is strange, but it's interesting. And this is why I will go back to something that you were criticizing, the end of the movie and yeah. how they uh, were caved in and, you know, like Yeah, it was themselves. like they went back I, into the concentration camps, I, I, but now I, exactly both of them that. were rationing. They were both exactly living that. off of just... You and know, it was just, I loved yeah. that. I loved karma. I loved the thematic connection of them cutting back to a place where she was so malnutrition mm, yeah. that they had to leave, and they both end up dying. Uh, but before that, to the point where yeah, they were just... What did you expect? Did you really I mean, expect them to just... How could you have it pictured a happy ending where they just like run off? No. And are they going to get married mm-hmm. or are they just going to continue to... like? Hate yeah, like, sabotage each other, like not sab- but like they didn't sabotage each other. But there it. was no way that this relationship of seclusion could have worked, and that's what the ending really, really solidifies. Um, okay. The fact that they're murdered, and I, I believe that's very thematically connected to the Holocaust, which I love even more. That it. Uh, does such a great job of not only showing you, hey, she's in the same mental state again, and now he is too. And they're both in such peril for their lives. And it really ends in blatant death this time. There's a lot of power in that, especially considering it's him as well. That was a Nazi. And uh, I, I, I think that is a reason that maybe it was praised so much. Because after being such a weird, in-between, not really Nazi-sympathizing film, but still she falls in love with one, uh, it takes this stance where everyone is equal. Okay. And I love that. I, I, I love that, that it eventually got there. Um, which is why I, I told you I love the ending of this film probably more than the entire film. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, it finally ended. It, no, <laughs> no. I mean, yes, but, but it was moving. Like, I paused it in shock and I rewound. I'm like, this, Are you serious? This didn't just happen. And I rewound. I watched no. it again. And it, it, it really impacts you because you don't. You don't feel it coming. You don't see it you coming. You didn't see. I saw it coming. Yeah, when when, when I, that I Nazi literally guy, when they were driving, they were when, the shot. I they, oh the other guy the following but, them. But, but I mean, yeah, no. I but also right. too. Well, I mean, but the thing is, yes, yes, yes. The they were being followed, but wait, the, you thought they were just being followed because it was watching. for protection? Well, no, too, no, the, no, no. I knew they were being followed, uh, but uh, the fact that they. Or just quietly walking, you know, after that. It didn't really, we didn't know the passage of time between. Um, for that to happen, and then just to see one collapse and the other go kind of frenetic, I think it, uh, I think it was her. Yeah, she, yeah, she hangs she on to like yeah. the, she hangs on to the railing. Yeah, she hangs on to the railing and then she gets shot. I mean, you don't see that coming, even though you do see that coming. I, I do. I, be, be, because it's so. Uh, even that whole ending, even if you do see it coming there being followed, the jarring mm-hmm. uh, ending. It was. It, it's very, it it's was. Very, like, when I rewatched uh, it for the second time, like, the whole entire movie, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and I finally, like, paid t- attention to It is the very ending. effective. It was. I was like, wow, that was, yeah. Yeah. That's a very but that's effective story. was it line. different? Had, had I ever seen, I had seen I, endings like that before. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that was, I can see that's what how I, it could impact somebody. That's what I, when I, when I saw the ending, I was like, oh, like, yeah, like I've seen that before. Shot, yeah. yeah. Like, when that Nazi it? guy was like, the last thing we want is violence, I was like, oh, right. they're, they're, yeah. they want violence. Like, they're going to do something about you, this. <laughs> what is it called? Like, when you do exactly what you're not supposed to do, isn't there like a terminology for that? Uh, yes, there is. I, the name escapes me, but yeah. Yeah. It's know. just like, oh. don't do violence. Okay, I'm doing violence. Um, I just like that it didn't use a cop out, you know, happy ending. So you I would like- consider this a. a 
because uh, I also want to talk about the good points. So you would consider this the ending. I would. I, I I think the yeah. the cinematography was on point. I think that for the political sphere that it aimed for at the time, uh-huh. it was very effective. Looking back right now, I don't think we can really look at it in a positive light. Maybe outside of a political sphere, we can. And outside of a misogynistic feminist Ooh. year, we can't. But uh, that's a whole other argument that we didn't get into. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, if we would have gotten into the feminist argument of it, I mean, we, we would have gone for did a long for a time. Bit. And but we did. but we I, I do it. think that it is very deserving of its criterion because of how beautiful it is, how mm-hmm. meaningful the thematic elements are, and that guy damn ending that just stabs you (laughs) you know because it should have a messed up ending it's a messed up movie about a messed up story well yeah it was in and it should have a messed up ending yeah what about you ron what are what's your favorite scenes the favorite scenes uh i really like the when uh what's her name lucia first gets mm-hmm. to the hotel for the first time and they like see each other again <gasps> yes and the, exchange. and sh- they go to the desk and like he sees her there and then even afterwards too where like the whole time before that you see him as kind of like he's like in charge of this hotel and mm-hmm. he's like on top of everything and like after that moment he's like oh like he's like distracted and the whole like scenes after that he's distracted i like the yeah like i really like the beginning of this movie because yes. I'll, I'll say for real it's like i didn't read what this movie was about the description mm-hmm. like of it that well i just saw like concentration camps nazis i saw the cover so i was like oh, it has to have something like weird With the nazis and so stuff, yeah. i saw the movie and i thought it was gonna be like some like oh it's in this hotel and it was just gonna be like yeah all that messed up stuff was in the past and it's gonna be the whole movie was gonna be about like them yes. two like in this hotel stuck kind of trapped in this hotel and it might have been like this kind of like cat and mouse type oh, thing. It was like, actually, very interesting. It, it, that's why it would it, be probably psychological and that's and, and that's the part it i was. did like and, and that's all in yeah. the beginning like yeah, probably like the first half of the movie the, yeah really and i think that. and i think that's like the strongest part of like yeah. that's the that strongest part of the hour, movie yeah. yeah that's what really like just like boyhood kind of because you really you. build yeah you really build and i and i i also think yeah. that's what makes the ending so effective so as my favorite scene is going to be that dancing scene. It that, is just yeah. so breathtaking. No, I think my favorite scene was when they were at the opera, at the performance. Oh, yeah, that, that was really good. He's wow. just like staring at her like when we talked about it, when yeah. we were discussed it, where he mm-hmm. still has a hold and, on her. And, and it sh- was so greatly shot with the zoom in and the zoom yeah, out. There's something yes. I didn't notice. There was a shot, though, where it, like, it lingers like on the back of her head. Right. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's so cool because it's kind of like you're kind of like staring you're the at one that's Yeah, staring you're at being her. like this but, weird dude staring at this. Yeah. <laughs> Another, another You're the thing, yeah. Another thing I loved about that opera scene is that when we saw a character, it would zoom, and after the zoom, it would go to a flashback. Yeah, and we would get this backstory, usually in relation to another character, and then get that character and get their sort of flashback. So this editing was just so yes, phenomenal. The, the editing was yeah. really well. Yeah, yeah. I'll say because those it my... was in relation to every character yeah. and their yeah. development. I'll, I'll... So I, that added to the intensity course, yeah. and beauty of the opera scene. Yeah, because we talked about this earlier. Yeah, I said those are my two things I like about this movie is probably like the. Um, I do think it's like really well directed. I think she did a really good it job. Is, yeah. well and the shots, some shots are amazing. Um, I think they're really, they some really look nice. <laughs> some shots, not all of them. Yes, some, yeah. of them so, some look rough. really good. Some, yeah. But you can tell that was like like a quick shot like of something yeah like it was um, just not not enough editing time and, and then the editing too i think was really well and i think that's i like I, i'm not saying i like this movie but what i do like about it's probably like the technical aspects of it more mm-hmm. so than the yeah the, yeah they were the, very well done like I, I think where they should have messed it they did but i feel like in the artistry like not just visual i would have loved to yeah. feel i felt more like connection towards the story and i think that's probably why i feel like it was probably the script that flopped it for me mm-hmm. but i mean it could be also that i'm not a masochist <laughs> I, yeah and i and I, I do think that the a film, yeah and it is it is a style over substance film and it kind of shamelessly does that even though it does aim so hard to be substance with you know you the know, setting and the character it, it, it feels like it tries to it be. tries to be but it doesn't for the sake of subtlety yeah in my opinion or at least that's what it felt like 
Yeah, you know, like I didn't think about to, that, but I think I, it I tried agree to be with more that, yeah. so because I don't feel like it was purposefully badly written. Mm. It just seemed like it wanted to add some mystery, have a mm. lot of mystery around its characters to the point where you're, you're intrigued right. and you want to watch them and learn about them. Mm-hmm. You're right, and and, and that that adds to the runtime. Like I I was glued to it, even though nothing particularly good happened for maybe 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, and, the rationing. Um, no, well, actually, I I liked that rationing. because I was like, oh man, like it's the same thing all over. And I really yeah, like that thematically. I, but it was just a little bit too, maybe yeah, kind of, from I, like 30 minutes the, to like 15, 20 minutes. There was minutes a scene before that that went on for too that. long. But um, yeah, I think it would have focused maybe. Oh, the dry humping one too. Oh, that too. Oh, no, it, <laughs> it, it would have had some character weird, development. Dude. I don't know how I didn't bring that up. I mean, that was, uh, we, if we would have had character development it, instead might have worked a little That's better. That's what I am saying. Scripts <laughs> do that for your Scripts characters. Scripts matter. If you want good character development, you have to write your characters properly. You hear that, Kevin Smith? <laughs> um, <laughs> but like uh, you had said, and going back to this filming, a criterion, uh, in the release, Annette Indelsorf said that The Night Porter is a provocative but problematic film film yeah that i it, think problematic would be like the definition that's of the film. first it's, word pro- i thought of it. when i saw it and problematic um she goes on to say it can be seen as an ex- exercise in perversion and exploitation of the holocaust for the sake of, sake of sensationalism yeah on the other hand a closer reading of the psychological thriller suggests a dark vision of compelling characters doomed by their world war ii past and see actually now going back actually going back to the question you had asked me if it would be like historically probably relevant maybe in that aspect maybe because i don't know it and enough because i haven't really had the time or want and need to explore how nazi people were with in, people especially I know in italy that they were just you like know? burning people well Italy was mostly fascist. Well, I mean, this was Vienna, Italy, right? But Italy yeah. was mostly in part with Mussolini, and then it was mostly the North because they were more bougie. The South wasn't even included in this. They were right. actually being murdered and being sent to concentration camps. Oh, good lord. Uh, it was mostly the North that had ties with the Nazi Germany. But even then, you know, very typical Italian. I'm not going to say typical Italian, right? <laughs> I dated one, but... You know, oh for, no! <laughs> you know, but he—he's the one that kind of told me. It's just like, yeah, just we'll do it. La- yeah, we'll go fight war later. We'll fight the war mm. later, and that's how they probably survived by just never going to war <laughs> until the Nazi officers, you know, stormed in, and you know, they made halfway in, and then the war was won. I think. Yeah. And then I should know this shit. I was like, mm, yeah, you war should. War. You you went to school for this. <laughs> I went, I got a degree for this. We'll have mm-hmm. to. Be. Um. But, yeah, yeah, no, those those are probably um, the things. But like I said, I digress. It's like, I think that it does probably go a little bit more in depth as to probably their behaviors because in that time when, you know, they were on the rise and, you know, their economy was booming, they were living very luxurious, very bourgeoisie style yes, kind of were. lives. They're living the best of lives because obviously... Yeah, they were getting rid of these people who, yeah. you know, had nothing to do with them being poor. You, know, you lost your first war, honey. You got to recover yourself on your own. You know, don't go killing people. And we also have to take into account this is such a strange but, tale that would really. Yeah, exactly. If, you know, it's, it's like when you th- when you do history and you don't go on a specific person, I guess in a way this could be like a good example of like a f- specific story. Mm-hmm unless you really delve into like all the stories of Holocaust survivors, but some, some stories will be messed up. Like yeah. That. Like this maybe is probably very much. Uh, so I guess in a sense, maybe it could be historically yeah. relevant, but it's not accurate. So I will discard it. <laughs> my true self says no, right. but my body <laughs> says to, yes. I see. And yeah. And I, and it goes back to uh, the genre thing. You know, some people are going to see it some way historical film simple some people will see it as a romance film and well yeah we some just people literally will, discussed exactly that i and i think that's just going to be this big divergence in it it uh, or has been a big divergence in it it's such a strange mm-hmm. movie yeah i i just it's really hard to pin down well 
Did everybody get to talk about their favorite scenes? Do you have any other things you want to talk about, mm, Ron? No, not so much. Yeah, I mean, so I that, we're gonna go into the ratings, and you know, I I kind of like soften up a little bit. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> that up. that feminism movement, you know, it gets me every time. Uh, I gotta love my sisters, <laughs> women filmmakers. I, I didn't mean to make it feminist, but yeah. <laughs> no, I love that every time you stray me right back into the right course god um you're the light a, a fun fact for anyone that likes the talented mr ripley she did direct the sequel to the talented mr ripley it's called um wait how did we end up in talking about mr ripley uh she okay. directed the sequel who oh, really? liliana yes, cavani ma'am she did it's called ripley's game uh, so that's another one that and I'm like Talented I found Mr. out last Ripley? night when I looked her up but and I was it, like oh shit isn't the Talented Mr. Ripley a remake of uh, what's the name of that movie it, it's a Pur- remake Purple Noon right uh, I don't one. know oh. it's the guy I don't know the actor's name but it's the guy from uh, Le Samurai oh uh, yeah what's his name he's like a oh French actor oh my god actor. I know this because uh, of uh, fucking Gidania. wait 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 The Last Samurai uh, Jean-Pierre La- no not Jean-Pierre Alain Delon <laughs> Alain Delon I think that might be Alain Delon it is Alain Delon uh, with, with Natalie Delon, yeah. Get that French New Wave cinema out of here. It is here. French New I Wave. I still right. got it. So she she did direct the sequel to, uh, to uh, Ripley. Yeah, it's called Ripley's Game. Uh, like I said, I want to see Berlin Affair to see yeah, how she I think, handles this. I want to see the good and uh, and, the bad I, and Beyond the, Good and Evil. Beyond I good, I've heard the a good, lot, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks, Clint. The good, the bad, I know. Right? I, I've heard a lot Just of really good thing about uh, Cannibals, or as you call it, the Union yeah, Cannibals. that was one of her first ones. Uh, Ikanibli. Uh, I don't know. I've heard awesome things about how like demented it is. So I'm I'm interested oh, in seeing that. Uh, I actually have that on my on. My drive, so I'm gonna download that. Uh, <laughs> I do, yeah. I, 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 I like, don't talk about so your illegal activities. On I this. mean, uh, <laughs> it's legal. We don't what? do. I bought them we all. don't do illegal things here. I, I, I bought all of these movies. Um, I we pay, pay for. for we're good American people. I mean, come on. I, I, Who I, pay their taxes <laughs> and their subscriptions to their streaming I do. Sites. I always. I do though. HBO, <laughs> you know, gets me every time. A list every every month. Every month. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's go into the ratings, and I want to go ahead and start with you, Ron, because you know. What are we doing? Out of because Ron is five? probably the highest. Out of yeah. five or out of five? Out of five. five. Ooh, what if, is it? If what it's is five, it, Ray? if it's five, then no, it's um. Because Ray's just here, looking um, like a creeper. The typical rating that we do is one out of five. That's right. And again, you base it on anything you want. As Bryce asks every single time, what we're basing it on, I'm like. Well, what do you think about the movie? <laughs> so um, one out of five. One out of five. Out of I five. would say it is. Nah, I don't know. I don't. Maybe like a three. Oh wow! I would. I don't know. Maybe like a three. Yeah. I would say maybe like a two point five. <laughs> a two point five. Two point five. Soft. A soft yeah. three. Two point five. Soft, soft three. three. Yeah. Why would you give it a? Okay, now why would you give it a soft three? Because a I, soft flaccid three. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I would ever go back to this movie. Like it. It's. I don't know. It's not a movie that I would like. That you would rewatch. Yeah, like I can never be like, oh, today seems like a night porter type of <laughs> yeah, type of type of night. Not. So, <laughs> but I do, I do like it I get for I, the shots. Like I said, the we're shots, good yeah. editing. I don't discredit it. I don't know. Like it, I feel like it does have its place in, in the, the Criterion. Criterion collection. Okay. Yes. Um, but it's not really my kind of movie. So, <laughs> I would say a two point five three. Two point five. 2.53 we doing decimals yeah. where are my blocks uh-huh. where are my counting blocks yeah. can't do this i don't think anyone's gone like like a prime number at the end of that 2.53 2. <laughs> 2. 3. 3. 3. 3. 1, 4, 5. it's almost like you're not budging from that three man like yeah maybe really pressing on it maybe three fuck like it three. three we'll keep it three Official don't, we're gonna don't, bit don't, don't blank man this man. Like, don't blank man it. <laughs> Two point five three, right? Two point five three, dude. All right. Well, DA, my beautiful co host. Um I rated it originally at three and a half stars, so three point oh, five. Is that um, on your leather letter box? Do you wanna do box? a plug in for your letter box? Yes, <laughs> plugging my letter box slash T Sabata. Um, <laughs> I uh I I liked it. I, I'm teetering between a three and a three point five out of five. But uh I I do think it was very well composed. I do believe there were issues along the way. I think that especially in our current 
political climate and the way that we treat women in the industry now it is very problematic and i could have easily bashed the crap out of this movie for that because well you can now because i mean i want to know why you would give it a 3.5 so uh i because i think it's cinematically beautiful i think it was uh very important for the time i knew that she was going for something very ballsy and she did that yeah and i think that the fact that a female director in italy raised so much controversy with a political purpose is important Mm -hmm. because Look at Spike Lee. He just won for Black Klansman. You cannot tell me Black Klansman is not a politically fueled film. So it is important to have things like this going, ongoing. So I can appreciate why The Night Porter exists, and especially as a Criterion film. Yeah. Uh, So you you accept its position in the Criterion. Like, it deserves its position. Yes, I accept its position. I do think the script is problematic. I do think the characters are underdeveloped. I do, like I said, feel like this is the anti Gio, yeah. where it's muted the colors are muted the character but it's also very Gaio in the sense that it's the dubbing is exactly the same the acting is so overacted okay you know there's just that sense of non-realism that contributes to taking you out of it mm-hmm. But it's forgivable because I guess I've watched so many Italian films from this time that it's just like... I, from this time, though. From this time. Full disclosure. From this time that I'm just like, I get it, you know? But, you know, even then, dude, if you look at Italian cinema that was not super dubbed nine billion times at this time, like, some of it wasn't great. Like, someone... Yeah. Just, I, I, I watched a video essay on The Night Porter and someone was comparing it to other... Uh, another italian filmmaker and you know it still wasn't a great time for italian cinema yeah. but uh obviously the dubbing did not i just help. like full uh-huh. on like i think because of that i just want to like full on but, say when you have the option to have it in the in its original <laughs> language for any film i feel like there should be you should watch it in the yeah. original but you will get more out of it Watching it in the original language, for some reason, I feel personally that so, so, would be the right way to do so it. So does that mean uh, your uh, your solo rating loses a star or my which one? Solo. That's for that's for that's for. Well, no, I know, I'm but gonna, I, they I'm did the same thing. They did the same thing. I'm not gonna be like there was hot, there was Ninja super Turtles. dubbing in yeah, that film. Full on five. No, you know, but like you know, this dubbing occurred in films, especially like solo. I know, I've seen it, and but, I hate it. I hate that. I know, but uh, this is Suspedia. about... <laughs> I hate the dubbing of Suspedia. But, you know, it's just that that was filmmaking at the time, and it's what we've come to accept. Yes, but I'm saying, yeah, I know, and that's why I'm telling you, like, sometimes maybe you can't, you know, have it lose credit because of the dubbing, right. but, like, when you have the option to watch a film and, like, you know... It's native tongue. Na- native tongue, every time. Like, I just wanted right. to give that advice out yeah. to people I'm not, who I'm are not. just so comfortable watching everything in English because it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm not going to put You get more Roma out of the English. film when you watch it in its natural language because it's just, it's full composure. It's just giving you everything that it's supposed to be. But, all right. Uh, so you're rating 3.5? Uh, yeah, I'll stick with my 3.5, yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, give it a... See, I was thinking about giving it a 2.7 because I don't believe in whole numbers. But, you know, like a three sounds like it's a it's a passable three. But, you know, because she's a film, female filmmaker, she's a female director. And, you know, I love my female directors. But at the same time, you know, I'm very conflicted with the fact that I was just confused the entire time of what kind of relationship story it was. Right. So that lost a whole star for me. And then the some of the shots, you know, were not really my favorites. Eh, like maybe like, you know, this point seventy five. I mean, not 0.75, like 0.25 mm-hmm. out of that whole star. And then we go into decimals, and then um, I'm just going to say I, I, I can't do math, so I'm just going to give it a three. <laughs> no decimals, a three. I give it a three. And, you know, I, I was going to give it a 2.7 at the beginning, mm-hmm. but, you know, after this whole discussion, you know, like, I think that I may have missed some points that were very important that I now can resonate to. And I think I would not 
watch it again soon but right. it's something that maybe i could find myself watching again with somebody else i wouldn't want to watch like show it to somebody like hey let's watch night porter yeah you know hey let's not. have movie night and watch night porter and we almost did that we almost, we did, almost did that almost but did that. we watched what, what did we watch instead? we didn't watch we didn't anything watch we were gonna watch burning and we don't oh, watch anything shit, we still have to watch burning we too. still have to watch burning but yeah, I I still I give credit where it's due, which is in the artistry, and then like the point seventy five is just complete script. But you know, like yeah. I understand the script was left for characters to just give out that mysterious vibe. But you know, I was already confused with the story. I was confused yeah. with the languages. I was confused with everything, and then you give me a confusing <laughs> cast, which is just four people, four <laughs> or five people, and I don't I only know two people's yeah. names. You know, oh, by yeah. the heart. I don't know any yeah, of those. Two are, two are flesh. Style, quote unquote, yeah. you know. Which one's the monocle guy? Uh, the monocle was it the guy. Was it Klaus? Yeah. The I think t- it was Klaus. It was Klaus. That it was the mon- is the monocle is Klaus. He yeah. walks that in. Is, and he's just... the one that does the performance, right? Yeah. No, that, no, no. The, the monocle, monocle guy is the guy who has his hair like slicked back, which I don't. Yeah, it's him. That he is... I still not. I still don't know. Is he a Nazi too or not? No, I think I had read that he was a Nazi survivor. Oh, so he just but, hangs out with them now? Yeah, but okay. you didn't see that one scene where, you know, uh, este, what was his, este? Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, shit. Oh, the, the Mex- Mexican came out. Mex- oh, shit. <laughs> Once the Mexican comes out, you know, it's downhill from here. God. No, I'm kidding. But uh, the main character, was it Max? Max. It was Max, Max right? Was you know, like Max goes to, because I, I also read up on it, and I did see the performance twice, and I was just like, what is this? Where right. he's just like adjusting the lights, and then there's this guy just like half naked dancing around oh, in yeah. his bedroom. Right. I think that was Klaus. That's Klaus. Oh, okay. Was that Klaus? Klaus. Dude, was... I'm telling you, I didn't really, and that's because I watched this movie twice. I didn't yeah. catch much of the names. I just caught Lucia and Max. His name and... is Philippe Leroy. Uh... And then like, I, is he? No, that, that's the monocle guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, wrong guy. That's, that's the monocle guy. That's the monocle okay. guy. See, I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, this was a very yeah. It is, it is one of the strange so, films. Point seventy five on that. Yeah. And I think that would be it for me. Yeah, I can yeah. I, I can see it being one of those that people you know have an issue with, but it's interesting because the issues that I hear you all having with it are not the issues that, that you're I, having. Not me personally. Yes, I yeah, guess this is all personal for me. Um, but, you know, and not, no, not so much that I disagree with you because they do. Be, uh, but like, oh, okay. In comparison, <laughs> uh, in comparison to things like uh, people that are criticizing the film now, look at Roger Ebert, uh, who had, I mean, his was the '70s, but there's others from like '05 and more recent ones that are obviously very influenced by feminism. If someone right now were to watch this. It's just, like I said, it is a very, very different film to see in the Me Too slash Times Up era. It yeah. just... Oh, yeah. It, plays, oh, yeah, it has to no, play differently. That, and, 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 yeah, and, like that, but I'm completely... I completely yeah, it, separate it, it, my politics separate, from my film. But see, the thing is, is you my cannot... Heart, it's my love, it's you, my soul. Well, this film is a political film, though, so you can't say you're separating It's not like it. I'm blinded by the fact that it is a political... Of course, I'm a history major. No, I'm not... I know, but I'm saying this is a political film. I know it's... But, like, when I watch cinema, I want to be able to just take in the story, you know, for what it is and not be, like... I, I feel oh. like, the, but you can't appreciate the story without the history. You know that better than me. No, yeah, I know that. But what I'm trying, how am I trying to explain it? Like, oh I, would, I would say it's like, like the I, I, politics, I, like of the time. I would say, like, yeah, you got to you, you gotta like watch it and the be like of the time because uh, I know that feminist movement was really mm-hmm. strong at that time. But right. I don't because that's what like she was thinking to, of when she was making the movie. Yeah. it had so to be the current yeah. climate. That, like I can, I can respect the current climate, but I can't like bring it in and tie it in like right. like Spike Lee did it in Black Klansman, where that totally ki- that ending totally killed me. Do you, do you spoiler think, alert? Do you, do you think what? And see, for me, the ending is what brought it all together. But I'm not going to discuss that. Uh, but see, is it not important for us to look at films like The Night Porter through that scope now? Because okay. obviously a filmmaker like her went for something very feminist at the time, but is no longer is no longer perceived as feminist. People criticized it, especially Ebert, of being very uh, male gaze. I know there's a word for it, but he said it was just not 
the feminist film that she wanted it to be. Yeah, but for because- many people... It was at the time. Well, yeah, but that, so, exactly. It's so, different things for many mm-hmm. different people. And, and, and I think it's generation. That's why I like it when films give you the open interpretation to things. Because then it lets you invest yourself more into the film. Oh, yeah. And I feel like if you just like... like and you you leave said, it, if you leave it open, something that was made, let's say, 1974, yeah. you watch it. It can mean something you, then. Yeah. You and watch it. In 2019, and, and, and it can mean just something it, different. Like, but... That's also important. Does something hold up? Does the Night Porter hold it, up I don't now? feel like it held up for me. And for not, me, no, that, For the feminist doesn't. politics of it does now, not. it does not. Right. So I cannot take it into accountability that it resonates to the feminist politics of now. But at some point. But, I mean, not just because, you know, she is a... Fe- like, we have to give her credit where she's due. She's bringing out, you know, ideas that are probably seemed crazy at the time yeah it was at its time you know like i want to connect it to its time and then if she gives me the time to process it which she kind of didn't because like Mm -hmm. that script was not Mm -hmm. really meant to then i can kind of connect it to oh you know maybe i can take these key notations this was a psychological film so it was mostly things we mostly and that's what took a while to figure out like Mm -hmm. it It was a while a romance film and then it was oh wait this is kind of like stockholm syndrome and wait am i supposed to be rooting for this guy like what's going on and then you know you get into it all and it changes for sure very much changes uh but it was lubricious. That's the male gaze word. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Ebert said that it was a nasty, lubricious film, which would be pornographic in another word. And in the end, I mean, l- lubricious, now that you bring that up and, you know, just kind of like wrap it up. I mean, I guess that's probably why, you know, Nazi exploitation films came out of this, because then afterwards you get Ilsa from the SS. And I mean, from what I was told oh, from God. my coworker who. You know, heard. I don't know if Noelia told you about them. No, she didn't tell me about. Yeah, she told me. You know, she heard a podcast about the SS, Elsa of the SS, and you know, she was fucking brutal. She was like f- burning people. She was chopping up Jew people in you know people in the concentration Is camps it, and feeding it, them to their dogs to her dog and just when she was asked, "Hey, did you feel sorry for it?" She did not feel sorry for it at all. That's you know? a movie. That's it, a it, fucking it, movie, dude. It, like, I'm not even kidding. It's just like raw as fuck is it, but like it, now you have but like see now you have a female doing all of these horrible things you know so mm-hmm. where's the feminism in that is is it uh ilsa ilsa kosh ilsa kosh mm. uh a uh nazi concentration camp it's uh, ilsa. Oh my god, there's more than one concentration camp. Oh, well, this is the movie. Uh, there kind of was. Uh, oh, no, yeah, no, it's the same one. Can't think but of uh, there was only one. It's, it's Ilse Kosh. Uh, <laughs> historical Dude, there are little, like, 30, 15 minute docs on YouTube, and they call her the bitch of Butchenwald mm-hmm. Nazism. Yeah. There you go. See? The witch of Butchenwald Nazis. Yeah, like, she so, was a bitch of Nazi prisons. Uh, one of the she was one of the most what notorious the, Nazi prisons. Exactly, she was a fun, SSI. yeah, fun stuff, fun stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> she wolf of the SS. I'm adding this to my watch list right now. Okay. Well, yeah. See, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's the kind of filmmaking that came out out of this. But so, are you able to tie in the feminism into oh. now having a female? I wonder how she feels the, about. <laughs> Because obviously, I don't think she made this movie to be a Nazi exploitation, and but to say that this movie like kickstarted that, it did. I would like to see. I wonder if there's an interview with her saying like, like her thoughts on it. Yeah, like, oh, I'll, I'll look for one later. Hashtag but, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 After, uh, probably. Oh wow! I uh, I follow this uh, like a transgender woman uh-huh. on uh, on Letterbox who completely bla- like bashed Ilsa. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, so it has to be good, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's like I cannot wrap around my head uh, like I might wrap my head around this exactly, movie. See, it's offensive and audacious. Exactly. So, but see, <laughs> that's the thing. Now you have the female being. The one yeah, in power. This is so review this how, year. How would you feel about that? Like, where is the female empowerment in that? Like, should I feel okay that you know it's the woman now who's doing yes. all these things? Mm-hmm. 
but she's doing horrible things. So how am I supposed to feel about well, this? Well, 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 think See, about that's it. That's why I don't like bringing in politics into Maybe the films the, because. They, but that doesn't make sense because I feel like it's all the Nazi of the films. Thing. Are is, it the, is it the Nazi it's just thing? It's the Nazi thing, dude. Like you can't. It's just. It's something that you can't really feel okay with. Yeah, I guess that's. But you're not supposed to, dude. Like Spike. It's not I, even that I you're don't. not supposed to. It's just like clearly morally wrong yeah but people like literally don't know that that. that's why we have neo-nazi marches and that's why spike lee made black clansman and i that's why i I, I, i'm sad that you feel that disconnect towards the end of the movie because i feel like it is the perfect connection between the film like i don't like like what other connection can you make to our political climate right now that's that effective well i mean if if that was the case like what are you gonna do i could literally make a case of a of any politics in literally every single film then that devalues the credit of it yeah but not not every yeah but no but because now like if you find a political argument in every single film then Mm -hmm. it's just going to discredit every political movement right but not uh, of course that's why like political when when we do like the criterion thing not really the criterion thing but like the film thing like you want to talk about like the the Finding, filmmaking the filmmaking aspect and, but and I, I appreciate one, the politics of it but i don't see it i don't see it. like I, uh, other than the fact that it was a feminist I director i mean the fact that it took place in the 70s during a time and was meant to be a statement for the government that we didn't live for and exist i don't feel like i can say anything exactly. because she made a big fucking deal over there and she made this film controversial like exactly. the reason that we're talking about this movie and having this podcast right now no, is because this film resonated in italy with the government the way that salo the way that salo did though dude yeah and then but it doesn't matter what murdered. fucking year it doesn't matter like the reason we're having this conversation is because of the influence of this film and i think that's the importance of it that we cannot overlook look that the fact that it was political as much as we want to separate politics from art and as much as we try to there are just some films that we cannot to value and this is one of them okay all right yeah respect yeah i just i i i don't see it any other way i I, yeah feminism sure that's a touchy subject with this film because it tackles it in a good and bad way but as far as politics it was very politically geared and she knew that. For its time. For its time. But looking back, I mean, now it's problematic. So, oh my goodness. So, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's not that I want to get into that. I'm just saying it's, uh, <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's an issue that obviously... Oh man, this got too heated. <laughs> no, it didn't. I'm just saying, you know, films obviously age differently. They do. And this was, like, if you... I mean, look, think about Salo, dude. Is that anything oh, that's that going to... that is a serious policy. Yeah, but film, is but... Salo going to aggravate anyone right now? Is this movie going to aggravate anyone right now? No, because these are things that existed within their time. That's what I'm saying about this film, though. Yeah, no, I, I, but I agree with you. Film. Yeah. Oh, you no, but he's also it. saying that it, it should oh, connect okay. to I what's thought, going like, on. Like, from the get-go, he's yeah. like, I don't agree with you. <laughs> no, 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 I, he I doesn't, know. He, I, he meant like he doesn't agree with your. I don't, you don't agree that your... there should be a separation all the time okay. of politics. No, and yeah, art. no, all the time, no. Politics but like film. for this one, I feel yes, like that's why we... it is political. But like for its time, it was because it was a big deal. Female director yeah. in Italy, uh, yeah, like you said, and you know. then not only female director in Italy, tackling what is one of the most horrific events of a time, exactly, which is the Holocaust. And then and going digging deeper and using a relationship between, you know, a sheep and a wolf, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then trying to see how the sheep is going to survive or if the wolf is going to survive. And if so, if you really think about it logically, can both the sheep and the wolf survive? And that's why they both died. Yeah, because the film quite literally tries to justify Either it one all. of them goes. Either she was going to die because, I mean, that was the entire thing with the trials. Either she was going to die or he was going to die. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that kind and of he did not want to give her away because, I mean, that's the romance aspect of it, I guess, that he was in love with her or something. Mm-hmm. But he didn't want to give her away and he would rather sacrifice himself to her, but then. And that is why. Yeah. Point 0.75 lost. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I feel like I am good. 
I had to say what I had to say. Probably said yeah. a little bit too much that I had to say. I can only hope to God that Ray respects me enough to just make me sound good. I'll do my editing tricks. <laughs> Should be all right. Jumps to flashbacks. <laughs> I'm not a Nazi. <laughs> okay. Um, all like right. Lars von Trier. Y'all are, y'all are, y'all are y'all good with the... Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, goodbyes, I guess. Oh, 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 yeah, no, so, be- yeah, be- before, just- before we do that... Um, I do want to bring up something that you said about uh, watching movies in their, like, mm-hmm. I guess their native language. Yeah. JCVD, John Claude Van Damme movie. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Which one? It's called it's called JCVD. Oh no, I haven't JCVD. seen it. No. I I'm just laughing at you saying John Claude Van Damme. He speaks like a, like a lot of French in this. Yeah. And he flows very well. And I feel like John Claude Van Damme in his name in like in French as opposed to English, totally different actor. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I could just be fucking around here like I normally do. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that was a very thorough discussion, yeah. analysis, if you will, of uh, The Night Porter. I have not seen this movie ever. Yeah, I faked and, my way into being a doctor. And frankly, I, I feel like I know a lot more about this movie if I were to <laughs> actually go and watch it. But I mean, it seems very like uh, there's a lot of debate going on mm-hmm. about this whole film between like, I mean, y'all had said like it's filmed very well. Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit of problems with the screenplay. Well shot. And of course, like controversial with like the subject matter and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, but uh, anyone out there who's actually wanting to watch this movie, I mean, I mean, you listen yeah. to the podcast. I honestly, I would say, it would encourage. Yeah, I, you to watch like, this. It's movie. not a waste of time. Of thing. Yeah. I would say it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not a waste of time. Like maybe say. once in your life, just to see it, just to experience it. I guess. Right on. Okay, um, I just want to do our little quick uh, endings here. Um, Please follow us on uh, those social media things at MoQuest Studios on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, YouTube. Instagram, YouTube. Yeah, all that stuff. Does anyone want to share any of their uh, social media or whatever, Twitter, Instagram? I mean, if you don't want to, please. <laughs> there, there are certain folks that when, whenever we do this, pretty much give me a fuck off answer. Really? So you know who that would be. Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, Ron Vega 92 Follow right. me. Uh, my Twitter is calcium underscore waste, and my Instagram and Facebook are calcium waste. All right. And I guess I'll just share my Instagram. I just started it back up again because I've been MIA. It's uh, idania.su or so. All right. So if you have any hate oh, directed yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Call me, call if, me you come an and, if you come and attack or... me, I am from the ghetto. I will meet you in the parking lot. Yeah, RGV, real, man. Um, <laughs> Lily Lanya is a confirmed Nazi, so. <laughs> I am not. Okay, Kristen Dunst, calm down. <laughs> Are you going to get up and leave now from no, the No, but I don't interview? have my Nona Ryder or like, anyone else to help <laughs> me. You know, God. Charlotte yeah. Gainsborough, where are you? Like, I, Lars Montreal. Okay, Montreal. and again, well, uh, she's right next to me, but you know. Yeah. This, again, this is our. Uh, divergent or we're diverging our normal uh, cinequest video um don't, no one out there can say that we don't respect or try to discuss or explore the spectrum of film from trash to art right yeah. <laughs> it's our first like first uh i guess journey into the artistic You're... version of film because right now we are celebrating trash whenever we do our bi-monthly <laughs> oh, yeah. entertainment movies oh, okay. and then of course our children delusional versions of nostalgia whenever we do our normal cinequest movies mm-hmm. <laughs> um but yeah. yeah so anyone else who normally participates in our cinequest video obviously does not have the criteria or knowledge to explore knowledge. criterion movies uh maybe cause, well ron obviously ron, no, does, ron, yeah. ron is the only one that was like oh, yeah. capable, He's a jack of all capable trades. enough to come back and discuss these movies everyone else Completely incapable. <laughs> While y'all were discussing the movie, I was just already hearing comments <laughs> thrown out there just oh on God. certain things. Oh, man. And, um, but yeah, I, I thank you guys for like trying uh, to going into this. And, thank like, you for yeah, giving thanks, us yeah. a dip voice your, and an outlet to actually just discuss film. Yes, I, sure. dip, I, your, dip your toe into the holy waters of filmmaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I am a minor in film, but I'm more from the trash cinema. Uh, and I, that's why you minored. That's why I'm minoring in it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, my whole goal was to be like a Lloyd Kaufman kind of guy. Oh. <laughs> and frankly, I think I can achieve that with like about 10 bucks and like my iPhone. <laughs> 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 Thank you everyone for participating yeah. in our 
uh, venture into Criterion movies. Um, signing off. Signing off, uh, please. Idania. GA. Ron. And I'm just engineer here. And you're fucking off. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye.